Mr. Khalid, we are back at Timepiece 360 for your super special auction, correct? Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Tell it us. is. This is auction number 50. So this is our biggest auction today. So I think we've done, we launched about a year ago. We've run 50 auctions since then. Uh, we checked the other day. I think we've sold uh, just over 1,200 watches um, in that time. So it's been going well, but this is going to be our biggest one. We have just shy of 150 watches on the auction. Um, and we've got a big range. So we've got uh, entry level, mid level, and kind of the higher end side too. Great. So for today, we again make two videos. We'll start with the Rolex. I guess most people are again interested in Rolex. So how many picks we have today? The six best Rolex from the auction? Yeah, so me and you were picking them out earlier and I think we struggled to pick out. Which was <laughs> our, there's a bit of fighting going on in terms of which uh, the top pick should be. But yeah, we've tried to choose a, a selection of, let's say, popular Rolexes. Is that fair to say? Yes, and we have six pieces in total. So how shall we start? Oh, I don't know. I was going to say lowest <laughs> to highest, but I don't actually know which is the lowest one. Um, so uh, we can start left to right. Unless you want to start a particular we way. We can also start by model year. If model can, year? Yeah. Oldest to newest? Yeah, let's start with the oldest to newest. Oh, now you put me on the spot. Okay, <laughs> oldest to newest is... Okay, I don't know. I, I'll choose this one because I don't know if it's the oldest or the newest. Okay. Because okay. this is uh, no papers. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so this is uh, the much sought after blue Skydweller. Yes. Um, as you know, Skydweller is the most complicated uh, of all Rolex watches. So this is the 42 millimeter blue dial. Um, this is box, uh, no papers. No papers means it does not have the warranty card. Mm -hmm. it can happen for many reasons, misplaced, lost. Um, a lot of people a few years ago didn't really value them uh, as much. This particular one, if I check on this sheet, is at, uh, it's very good, it's at 59,000 dirhams. Oh, wow. So the starting wow. price on this is 59,000 dirhams. Uh, which actually is, I think I can't. Uh, there, I sh should have done my research and checked what the retail price is. I forgot, <laughs> um, but I think it is there or thereabouts, or maybe even a bit lower. So this is the lowest blue sky dweller I've seen okay. in a long time. How, how much would you say does the watch lose value if you lose the papers? It depends from watch to watch. So the for more this one example, the more important the watch is, the more significant the card is. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say with this watch, um, if card and no card difference should be. Um, I would say anywhere between 5-10% to 10 of the value of the watch. Oh, so not too much actually. Like I said, it depends. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, okay. it, it shouldn't be huge, but, mm -hmm. but, but it's also understandable. So for us, whenever we inspect or authenticate a watch, we yeah. don't authenticate the card, we authenticate the watch itself. Yes. Uh, but understandably, when you're spending a lot of money, you know, some people do want that peace of mind, which, which also makes sense. Oh, so okay. it, it just depends on, on, on what you're willing to pay. But I Ooh. think 10% is more of a fair value. But sure. great watch or great amazing, one to kick off with. Amazing. Next. Uh, next. So if we're looking at age-wise, the next one then, which I know about is the oldest, is this. But I have to pair it up with its sister. Mm. So this is the black uh, Submariner uh, ceramic. This is the 40 millimeters. Okay. So the previous to the current model. Mm -hmm. uh, the current model is 41. This is the version before. This is the most popular uh, Rolex steel sports watch. Uh, always has, probably always will be. If I'm going to talk about this one, I have to mention this one, <laughs> right? So this is its sister or brother or whatever you want to call it. This is the Hulk, the discontinued Hulk, which was discontinued, I think, just over three years ago in 2020 or four years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, so same reference pretty much, uh, but one is the LV, one is the LN. Uh, the black Submariner, this is going at 26,000 dirhams. Oh, wow. Um, it's so like, what, like 40%, 35% below retail price? Yeah, retail, the new one I think is late 30s now. Yeah. Uh, so this is a really good price. This is 2017 wow. full set. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is good value. So great, this is a great watch for anyone um, who wants an everyday beta, someone who's looking to get into Rolex, um, uh, or someone who's looking to trade up uh, mm -hmm. for that value. Still a lot of money, but when, as it comes to Rolex, below 30,000 dirhams for a Rolex is very good value. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Insane. This is a special watch, obviously this is the Hulk, this is now discontinued, mm -hmm. uh, very much sought after. What makes this one more special is that it's a 2020, so this is the last production year. Okay. Uh, watch is in pristine condition, uh, very few if any 
uh, scratches at all. Uh, this is going for, if I check on the magic sheet, it's going for 64,900 dirhams. Um, we've seen these at a peak uh, trade north of 100,000 dirhams. <laughs> yes, yes. But you have to remember with these watches, um, over time, there becomes less and less of them about. Mm. Uh, so these are great long-term watches. If it's a watch you like, this is a watch you buy and you keep forever. Yeah. All right, so we're at the halfway point now. Yeah. Okay, so the next, if I go chrono chronologically, it's going to be the Milgaps. Okay. So this was discontinued last year, we said, right? 2023? Oh, I'm not too sure about the Milgaps. Maybe yeah, 2022 so. or 2023, yeah, one of those years. You know, you know, it's a sign of age when you... <laughs> it's a sign of age yeah. or it's a sign of that uh, time is going too quick. Um, this is probably off the Milgaps collection. The Azura Blue was always the, um, the uh, or the blue. This blue was always a star. Yes. Um, the combination of the green glass, the orange uh, flash, the the kind of flash sign seconds hand uh, with the blue, very very nice combo. This, as you know, is discontinued, like we just said, and this is a full set 2020 at thirty thousand dirhams, so below mm. retail of what very it was nice. when it was uh, retailing. Uh, again, this at its peak when I think it first got discontinued. Uh, I think they went about 50,000 dirhams. So, as always with these watches, when, when, when they get discontinued, they'll spike and then they'll come back down, they'll stay stable. Mm -hmm. And then over time, they will go up just yes. because, not, not from an investment purposes or anything like that, but just generally speaking with watches, when it's discontinued, over time, there's less and less and less mm -hmm. of them about. They become more sought after, become more difficult to find. Yes. As is with the older Pepsis, the older Cokes, the older Daytonas, that what applies. Exactly. All right, two more to go. Good. What else do we have? So this is another discontinued piece. Wow. So this is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 36 millimeter uh, coral red dial. Amazing. Piece. This is a beautiful piece. Yes. Um, so this this was discontinued in 2023. Uh, had a very short shelf life. Uh, I think it was in production for. Um, not longer than two years, I think, right? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think it was discontinued in 2022 uh, during Watches and Wonders and they only kept the, the green and the pink dial in production the, from the, the Stellar Colors. The production, they, they, it didn't, I think it ran for one to two uh, yeah, one this, or two years. One or two only. years, because I think this yes. came out during COVID. So this is a great watch. Uh, this is the type of watch you put on your wrist and it kind of uh, always draws attention just because yes. of the color of the dial. Um, everything else I thought about the watch is simple. It's the dial which lures people in um, and, and I think that's what makes it a great watch. Very good size, 36, is a unisex, works for both men and women. Uh, this in going, is going in the auction for 37,500 dirhams, 37,500 dirhams. So although it's a bit above retail, um, yeah. when we checked, it's I think it's quite a bit cheaper than the lowest on Chrono 24. So a very good uh, price for someone who's seeking this watch, uh, either for him or as a gift or as a long-term collector's piece, because this will become a collector's piece Definitely. in the long term. Especially if you have a full set on one condition and the, for these also the white hang tags, they're quite rare to find. So Not really? Chance. Yeah, especially, you know, since people started to changing the dials, if you have the white hand tag with it, you can see the original dial code that came with the watch. Ah, the one with the reference. Exactly. Got it, got it, exactly. got it. Okay, that, yes. that makes sense. And I think generally speaking why this will become a collector's is because Rolex typically doesn't make loud watches, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look, you know, the Sky Dweller, the Blue, you know, this, this is loud, right? And yes. that's not from really the ethos of Rolex, generally speaking. So I think this will always stand out. Cool. And All right, the last, last but not least, so this is a, uh, a newbie, uh, this is the GMT Master uh, Steel and Gold on a Jubilee bracelet, um, lovely watch, Yes. right, yes. this is the uh, Steel and Yellow Gold, I love the combo, uh, I think it works really well, um, mm -hmm. I think we've seen in the two-tone GMTs. Um, the root beer has been very popular, yes. but but I think this is just as popular nowadays. Uh, it just works so well. Works pot. It works formal. Works casual. Uh, you can really dress it up or dress it down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if I compare it to the root beer, definitely this is my pick. 
I love the Jubilee bracelet and I think the the black and grey bracelet looks just super cool on I think the Jubilee works really well on a two-tone <laughs> right? <laughs> yes yes because right, I know you're wearing much, the Jubilee on steel much better uh, than uh, but but it works really works well on actually it does not does it, it doesn't just work this is the classic when you yes, look at you know look at exactly. what what makes Rolex a classic the day just is a classic on a jubilee bracelet and here you're going back into kind of the classic look and feel uh, at least on the bracelet um, this is going for sixty two thousand dirhams uh, yes sixty two thousand dirhams which again is below retail yeah um, sixty eight sixty eight yeah. yes. So slightly, don't forget, uh, just to add a caveat with the auction, there is the buyer's premium, which is at 15%. Um, but if you look at these watches and compare them to the last, you know, if you look at the trend of, you know, we've been doing this now what, for talking about watches now for over two years. Um, and we keep on saying we're getting back to interesting levels. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty much there now, you know, what we say, very interesting levels or at retail or just below on some of these watches, you know. Exactly. Uh, Milgo's below retail, Sub is below retail, discontinued below retail, discontinued, uh, below retail. So um, I think they're, you know, interesting times, interesting watches. God knows what's going to happen with the future of these watches. Uh, but I think we have to enjoy them while we can. There's obviously a lot of noise now because Watches and Wonders is happening next month in April. Mm -hmm. um, so ah, actually the watch you have on, <laughs> will it, won't it, right? So I think the biggest talk and the biggest debate is on the Pepsi. Uh, will it get discontinued? Will it not get discontinued? So in the secondary market, it's been trickling up, I think, uh, in the mid 80s and higher now. Yeah. Uh, so it's the highest it's been for a while. But that always tends to happen when, when, when people get excited when they come to new announcements uh, about what will and won't happen. Good. Last question, Khalid. Which is your pick of the Rolex watches? Which one would you Ooh. buy for yourself? If I was going to buy a watch... Uh, <laughs> I, I know which one. <laughs> come on, I'll let you choose. Which okay, one do you think I I'm going to choose? I think you would buy the red OP because you were asking to buy mine for the last two years. Yes. All right. So yes, <laughs> yeah. because... Uh, and I mentioned this to you earlier. Uh, and uh, my, uh, I think this is it. This is a great watch um, because of its size. Yeah. This is a watch which I could pull off and also my wife could wear. Yeah. Right? So it's a great watch which both of us could wear. And actually, so I was going to pick this. I have a soft spot for green. Right. It's a, it's the t-shirt, nice the, this, the green, yeah. and this. So <laughs> I've owned the Hulk before. Uh, I love the Hulk. Okay, um, cool. I, I really love it. I regret selling it. So these would be my two topics. Okay, and nice. yourself? Uh, to be honest, I would take the uh, GRNR, the GMT. I mean, 6K below retail price for a brand new two-tone. GMT, what more you can ask yeah, for. Yeah, it's a fantastic deal. It's impossible to get it here at Rolex, very hard. So yeah, that will be my pick. Amazing. Um, all of these watches and much, much more, tpauctions.global. Uh, you can go in, check out the details, or you can physically come here, welcome us to the store, try them out, see the watches for yourself. Amazing. Thank you, Khaled. Thank see you. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.